This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. The first thousand people to sign up using the link in the description will get their first two months free. It's late in the 18th century, and a band of traveling showmen have put on a strange, wondrous, and rather disgusting show. A single man takes the stage, a rather ordinary-looking individual, not too skinny, not too fat, but rather pretty average. Then suddenly a basket of apples is handed to him, and the man swings his jaw open so wide that he pours the entire basket into his mouth. But he's not done. Next, he swallows a load of corks, then stones, and finally, for the grand finale, a live cat. Who was this real man who could and did eat anything? Welcome to this episode of the Infographic Show, the man who ate everything from human flesh to live eels. Born with polyphagia, a disorder that causes extreme hunger, the man known simply as Tarari had been a big eater his whole life. As a teenager, his appetite was so insatiable that his parents eventually kicked him out, unable to afford the massive amounts of food it took to keep him satisfied. Falling in with a band of prostitutes and thieves who discovered him digging through trash for food, he toured France and eventually Europe, eating everything from rocks to live animals, most notably cats, dogs, and eels. One eyewitness wrote of him, he seized a live cat with his teeth, eventrated or disemboweled it, sucked its blood, and ate it, leaving the bare skeleton only. He also ate dogs in the same manner. On one occasion, it was said that he swallowed a living eel without chewing it. It was said that animals fled from the sight of him as if knowing the fate that was to befall them. At age 17, Tarari weighed just 100 pounds, and despite his eating of trash and live animals, was certified as sane by various medical professionals. Tarari's body, however, bore the marks of his extreme eating. His skin would sag after stretching so much in order to fit all the food he ate, with the folds of his skin sagging so deeply that it could be tied around his waist like a belt. His cheeks, too, would drop down like an elephant's ears. After eating, his body would swell like a balloon, and afterwards, when he used the bathroom, surgeons noted that he left behind a mess that was fetid beyond all conception. Doctors also noted that his body smelled profusely, so powerfully that as one doctor annotated in his medical records, he often stank to such a degree that he could not be endured within the distance of 20 paces. With a metabolism on overload, Tarari's body was hot to the touch and he sweated constantly. It was said that you could see the sweat and stink rising off him like a vapor. Joining the army during France's war against Prussia, Tarari was upgraded to quadruple rations, but even that wasn't enough to satisfy his appetite, and so he would often be found digging through trash pits for any edible scraps. Eventually, he was pulled off the front lines and sent to two military surgeons, Baron Percy and a Dr. Corville. The two took a keen interest in Tarari and ran test after test on the poor young man, but were unable to determine the cause of his affliction. Then, one day, General Alexander de Beauharnais took notice of Tarari and his unique talents. Given his ability to eat anything, General de Beauharnais believed Tarare would make the perfect secret courier to deliver messages behind enemy lines. Testing his theory, he put a message in a wooden box and had Tarari eat it. After passing it a few hours later, the message was still readable. Tarari was immediately approved for a top secret mission. Disguised as a Prussian peasant, Tarari was meant to sneak past enemy lines and deliver a message to a captured French colonel hidden inside a box safely in Tarari's stomach. Perhaps because of his sagging skin or putrid stench, Tarari was immediately spotted, and unable to speak German, it didn't take long for the Prussians to figure out Tarari was a spy. Stripped, searched, whipped, and tortured for a day, Tarari finally gave up the plot and told the Germans of the message in his stomach. Chained to a latrine, Tarari was forced to pass the message only to discover that it read simply, let me know if you got this message. It seemed that General de Beharne did not much have faith in Tarari and had merely been testing the poor boy. The furious Prussian journal ordered Tarari to be hung, but upon calming down, felt a stroke of pity for the miserable Frenchman. Giving him a thorough beating instead, he sent Tarari back to the French lines with a warning to never attempt espionage again. Once back across French lines, Tarari begged Baron Percy to help him get better so he could be normal. Percy tried everything, from wine vinegar, tobacco pills, laudanum, and anything else he could think of in hopes of quenching Tarari's appetite. All to no avail. Tarari, meanwhile, seemed to only grow in appetite, seeking out food anywhere he could. Eventually, he was discovered drinking the discarded blood of hospital patients and eating bodies in the morgue. The final straw, however, would be when a 14-month 
month old baby went missing and rumors spread that Tarari was behind the disappearance, at which point Baron Percy chased him away, leaving Tarari to fend for himself. Four years later, Tarari turned up in a hospital in Versailles, dying of tuberculosis. Visiting him one last time, Baron Percy decided to wait until Tarari's passing and perform an autopsy in hopes of discovering the source of his terrible appetite. Yet if Tarari stunk badly while alive, it hardly compared to the smells that came from his dead body. The doctors that braved the autopsy discovered that Tarari's stomach was so large it filled nearly his entire abdominal cavity. His gullet was unusually wide and his jaw could stretch so wide that a cylinder of foot in circumference could be put through it. The autopsy had to be cancelled early though due to the incredible smells coming from Tarari's body, with Baron Percy writing, the entrails were putrefied, confounded together and immersed in pus. The liver was excessively large, void of consistency and in a putrescent state. The gallbladder was of considerable magnitude, the stomach in a lax state and having ulcerated patches dispersed about it, covered almost the whole of the abdominal region. Today we know that there are numerous causes for polyphagia, including hypoglycemia, hyperthyroidism, and diabetes. Modern medicine believes that it was hyperthyroidism that afflicted the poor Frenchman, with his thyroid working too quickly and flooding his body with hormones which would create an insatiable appetite. Whatever the cause, the ultimate eater known simply as Tarari is remembered to this day in France with many other sideshow performers also suffering from polyphagia often compared to him. If this episode helped you work up an appetite, why not try one of the hundreds of online cooking classes available now on Skillshare. From pizza to sushi, there's a training course to suit any palate, except for human flesh and live eels. But why not try a class like Think Like a Chef, A Beginner's Guide to Cooking with Confidence, or for the more advanced, try out a new cuisine with a class like Japanese Home Cooking. Premium membership will give you unlimited access to topics that will improve your skills and in the process, your life. Join the millions of people who are using Skillshare and get two months free by going to Skillshare.com slash Infographics34 or by clicking the link in the description and start learning today. So, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Have you ever seen anyone eat something really disgusting? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called Could the Black Death Happen Again? Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!